Great. Uh, we have a super brief agenda today. Uh, just for the record, my name is Laura Anderson. I'm the chair of the Ocean Science Trust, and I would like to just go around the squares and just do a super quick introduction. Um, and I'll just call off names for, for roll. So, um, Senator, would you start, please? Great. Uh, Senator uh, Dick Anderson, District 5, Lincoln City, and the entire coast, I like to think of. Great. And uh, it looks like we have Luke from Representative Gomberg's office. Hey there. Yeah, he can't make it right now, but um, I'm here to in his stead. So uh, Central Oregon Coast, House District 10. Thank you. So those are our two non-voting members. Now for voting members, uh, Christina. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. And I'm Christina Volnikovsky. I'm a trust member. And Steve. Thank you, Laura. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Steve Marks, a member of the Oregon Ocean Science Trust. Fantastic, and a huge welcome to our newest member of the Oregon Ocean Science Trust, Christine uh, Moffitt. Welcome. We're glad to have you here. Uh, just a brief introduction. Hi. Um, I'm not at Bassendorf Beach, but um, that's my background. Uh, I live in Coos Bay and I joined this group, um, I guess, what was it, the late fall, and uh, am glad to be here. Um, I'm a retired professor and scientist in fisheries and aquatic sciences, and I'm highly engaged in coastal issues um, and glad to be here. We're glad you're here too. Uh, we have um, Director Jean Strait from Department of State Lands today. Hi, I'm the Deputy Director for Administration at State Lands. So oh, that's all of you. Thank you for the <laughs> correction, <assert> Vicky. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> and also Aaron Smith. Hello, I am a. Uh... Executive Assistant to Vicki Walker, just here to help out in the background. Thank you. I see uh, two black boxes uh, for our public member, for public uh, participants, Ryan and then Bree. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, sure. Uh, Ryan Mann, I'm, uh, I work for the state treasurer and help staff his work on the state land board. Just here to listen in. You're Thank welcome. you all for your service. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bree Yednock. I'm the reserve manager at the South Sea Reserve in Charleston. Um, I'm just here to listen. Great. All right. Um, well, we have one um, urgent matter of business to attend to today and then one piece of potential good news to, uh, to just kind of do a quick briefing on. So, um, oh, Lisa. Uh, Lisa, <laughs> our, our fantastic consultant. Uh, I'm sorry, I skipped your name. Would you like to introduce yourself? No worries. I like to be in the background anyway. <laughs> this is uh, Lisa Debrick here. I've been providing some administrative support to the OOST to help uh, get the grant funding out the door. Good to see all of you and thank you for being here. Thank you, Lisa. And Lisa is probably a better person to uh, prop up the agenda item. I'll just give the brief, um, synopsis as I see it. Uh, there was a lot of weeds on this involving DOJ and uh, Jean Strait and her staff uh, determining who had the authority to enter into contracts to uh, execute the OAH grant agreements that Lisa has worked uh, diligently with DSL to get all queued up. And at the 11th hour, we, uh, it was questioned whether or not I had the authority to delegate the authority to DSL, and it was deemed most, uh, just to be most cautious and not to uh, have any question that uh, there is authority that the Oost board votes to grant that. And I actually have some draft language that I'll put in the chat, but that's a, a very short kind of synopsis. Um, I'd be interested in any questions that 
um, any of the OOST members have in regards to this or, or why it is. Um, and I'm sure Lisa could probably answer most of those better than me or Jean. But um, do you have any questions regarding um, why we had to call this meeting today? Steve? Uh, thanks. I, I, I understand. Um, and I think my question is more just about process. And I'm wondering um, if we need to do this vote um, if we do this, if, if we make this decision now and establish, um, <clears throat> delegate to the to DSL to execute the grant agreements, does that cover all of the OHA, OAH grants? Um, and I'm thinking about the ones that we haven't uh, awarded yet, the numbers four and five, or does that, or will we, will we need to come back and do this once uh, the rest of the uh, funds have been, or what's, once the rest of the RFP process has gone through and, we just, and we've decided on the other ones? Great question. Um, would Lisa or Jean be best? I, uh... Yeah, I can answer that. So if we state this in the motion that you're granting um, us the ability to administer the grants for the OHA, o, is it OHA? OAH. OAH, okay, um, then that should cover all of them because they're all listed in the statute. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I wondered also um, if it would behoove us to extend that beyond this particular grant program or if we want to um, do this on a grant program by grant program basis. Well, it seems to me that um, that we would want to do it for all of them, since DSL will be working with us on these. So, if we uh, delegate that authority to them, then it seems like we should be consistent with uh, all the grant programs. Okay, I tend to agree with that. Um, Jean, do you think there's any issue with extending this more broadly? Uh, no, I don't think so. As long as that's stated that um, all future grants too, you're granting that. I don't think, I think that should be fine. That's kind of how we all thought this was being interpreted anyway. So this is kind of just a little roadblock we need to take care of so we can do what we were planning on doing. Okay, so I'm just kind of uh, amending this motion a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and post it right now. The first part came to us directly from um, council. So I think uh, that's the, uh, the rule that we, reference and it might be a good idea to state the OAH grant program and mm -hmm. future grant programs as needed. Yes. Because we do have, for example, the Marine Reserves grant program is being run through Oregon Community Foundation. So not all of our grant programs need to necessarily run through DSL. Correct. But, um, as needed, we could state that. Christine? Um, I, <clears throat> I would only, uh, and I don't know whether it, it applies to this, uh, the way this is worded, but certainly the deliverables are something that we should be being att paying attention to in addition to the contractor. So I don't know whether that needs any sort of uh, amendment or anything like that. Well, we've been um, working really closely with Lisa on all the um, deliverables, and we've developed a system where if, DSL is holding the funds, but Lisa and I will be working together. She'll be verifying the de deliverables have been met before I release any of the funding. So we have designed it so that um, Lisa, as the OOS consultant, will be looking at all of those very closely, and then I'm kind of that double check on that. So I think we've got that covered, but I'd let Lisa address that. Yeah, I would just add that each scope of work that has been yeah. developed for each of the projects that is being funded has clearly described deliverables yeah. 
um, and reporting standards as well. So we've been pretty adamant about that, uh, both for the protection of the OOST and the OAH Council, but for DSL as well. Mm -hmm. And just to add on that, and OOST has a um, has a seat at the table in developing those RFPs and in value in and in reviewing uh, the proposals and stuff like that. So we we've got a role, a formalized a role each step of the way. Okay, I'm wondering if the language that was provided to us might um, be even a little, it almost sounds as if the OOST appoints DSL really for all of its grant programs. And I'm wondering if that's um, uh, something that we should address before we make the motion. I don't know if anybody else has seen what I'm, seen here, but uh, I would um, almost possibly um, restate. So part of this was just how broad the chair's authority was in um, delegate and appointing Department of State Lands as the administrator of a grant program. If it does not feel like an overreach of chair power to the rest of the board, one way to approach to approach this would to say that the OOST appoints DSL as its administrator for purposes of the OAH program and delegates authority of the OOST chair to um, further uh, for future. Um, DSL administer, administered grants. That well, way there's, it's clear that yeah. there's a choice um, of whether or not we want DSL to administer funds or another entity. And how you might wanna state that is that you're granting us the OHA grant programs to be the administrator and that you're delegating to the chair the responsibilities of the executive director because in it, in the the executive director has the ability to um, uh, uh, delegate this to us. And in my reading of your bylaws, the chair is your executive directors, but we couldn't find anything where the the trust said the chair acts as the executive director. And that's where I got that's kind of where I got hiccuped with DOJ. So, if you, you know, delegate the authority for the grants to DSL and then grant the executive director's responsibility to the chair, I think you'd be covered. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it does. I mean, some of it's just a little bit, I think we've used the terms executive director and chair interchangeably in our yes. history, but it's not as clear in the bylaws. And that's what yes. DOJ was concerned about. We could right. have two motions. We could have a motion that at least gets this uh, grant program administered under DSL. We could have a second motion to delegate the authority of the executive director to the chair for the purposes of um, administrative agreements with DSL, mm -hmm. or we could just, you know, we could take this on a case by case basis. And as we have additional grants to administer, we could just try to plan more in advance or just take them as they come. That's certainly an option. Any discussion on that? I think your, your revision actually makes it simpler, um, at least to get it off the ground. I would definitely get us where we need to be today. There's no doubt about it. And if that's enough, um, perhaps we could 
work on that broader authority. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll put a draft in the chat here um, and see if this is um, what we're talking about. So a little bit, it's just kind of a little wonky, but uh, the first one is where we need to be today. The second one would kind of cover us in future scenarios. Yeah, that seems like a good idea to have some motions. Christine, Steve, how do those motions feel for you? Um, <clears throat> thank you, Chair Anderson. Uh, th they look fine to me, and I agree with uh, with separating them into two two set two distinct actions i think that that's that's appropriate okay somebody like to make uh, motion number one i i've got my thank you chair i i've got my mic on so i'll go ahead and um i move uh that pursuant to oregon administrative rule 141-141-01304E that the Oregon Ocean Science Trust appoints the Oregon Department of State Lands as its administrator for purposes of the ocean acidification and hypoxia grant program. I second. Great. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion passes unanimously. And uh, with that, if we uh, want to move on to motion number two. I move to delegate the authority of the executive director to the chair for the purposes of appointing DSL to administer future OOST grant programs. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, fantastic. Motion passes and Lisa can continue her great work. I can't wait for our meeting uh, upcoming in April. We're gonna have some really good updates on all of these projects. Um, the second part of the um, second part of the agenda is in regards to a phone call that I received just last week um, regarding an opportunity that the OOST is being um, written in for. Governor, um, my, uh, my computer's freezing up on me, at least the Word document that I had open, which is terribly unfortunate because that's where the language is that I wanted to reference. Let's see here, ah, I have it back. So I'm gonna put into the chat right now, um, a copy of language that I received from staff to Governor Brown regarding a uh, direct appropriation that she's requesting in this budget of $2 million that would run through the OOST um, to be used um, for nearshore key uh, science and research on nearshore keystone species, including sea otters, nearshore marine ecosystems, kelp and eelgrass habitats and sequestration of blue carbon. You can imagine how elated I was to hear that this opportunity is uh, being at least considered at this point. And uh, it really just dovetails into so much of what we heard about the uh, from the Rocky Shores Working Group um, Territorial Sea Plan uh, work with um, Andy Lanier and Charlie Plybun's uh, presentation at our last meeting, 
as well as uh, the work that Tom Calvinese and others are doing down on the South Coast. And in fact, USTA had started to draft a nearshore grant, uh, prior a nearshore priority back when Louise Soliday was uh, um, chairing. And we still had some of that language about what some of those deliverables would look like in terms of developing um, management plans for keystone species like abalone and doing California, Oregon, um, like workshop to bring together data and researchers to synergize uh, between the states on near shore work as well as scuba surveys and um, a number of other deliverables. I think the governor was um, want wise to keep it very broad at this point. And um, at this point, we're asked to write a letter of support. Um, and um, as the chair, I wanted to ask for your permission to write a letter of support uh, for this appropriation. And um, I'd like to ask uh, Senator Anderson if uh, you have any um, insight into this or what you've heard in Salem regarding this particular request, sir? Well, I don't know that I have any particular insight. I actually do have a meeting uh, scheduled for tomorrow with the uh, governor's office on this subject. Um, and so the, the timing is uh, good because of, uh, it once again appears we're flush with money. Uh, so that's always the, the good time to make your ask. Indeed. I don't know if Luke has anything through uh, Representative Gomberg's office. I don't have anything to share at this time, unfortunately. Okay. I don't know that I could even really answer much by way of questions. Um, as I said, this came fairly quickly. And my understanding is that um, and Senator Anderson, maybe you could correct me, but this will all be decided by the end of the month, correct? Right. It, it'd be in the last uh, last bill, so to speak, of uh, session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that'd be first week of March, actually. Okay. Um, so with that, um, I would like to ask for a... Um, a motion to authorize me to write a letter of support. I already have one drafted. It's very, very short. Um, and it was um, to be addressed to uh, just a few key members of the legislature, um, Senate President Courtney and Speaker of the House Rayfield and uh, the co-chairs of the Joint Ways and Means Committee. Are you going to share that draft with us today or what? Um, um, I could show you the screen. I could screen share this right now. Um, but I think it needs a little bit. Uh, there's a few things here. Uh, Let, let me see if I can get my, my share going. Uh, I'm on a single screen because I'm on my little laptop here. Um, but uh, essentially, it's uh, this draft letter just says who I am and who we are and that we support the governor's appropriation. Um, and I, um, I wanted to change some of the uh, second paragraph. I just want to say we need focused science and research on these valuable habitats. Um, as much as I may want to use the words protect and restore, I think um, in reading this, I want the OOS to always remain agnostic to policy decisions. I think it's very important to the, there are, 
a lot of advocacy organizations and policymakers out there that can take scientific research, you know, and and use it in many ways. But one of the values of the US to the state is that we stay somewhat agnostic on policy outcomes and we just do the work. So I was um, I was uh, planning to remove that before sending it. Do we want to just limit the discussion of blue carbon to kelp forest and eelgrass beds, or is there a broader term that might be appropriate? I don't know. Do you have a recommendation? Well, certainly um, the spruce forest of the coast have shown in recent publications to have a tremendous amount of opportunities for year round carbon sequestration. And, and there's been work out of Oregon to really substantiate that. And there's been testimony that's been provided to document that. So I, I, I don't know what the, I haven't seen the original wording of this, but I think the general blue carbon would be probably better referred to in a, um, in a more generic opportunity. So I just, I, I had, sorry, I put in the chat and did not hit enter. This is the language that the governor is, um, was proposing to put forward. So um, I think is, in as much as we would want to mirror that pretty closely at this point, then perhaps, uh, if approved, then we can, then we'll have some work to do, right? This is, this would be an exciting, this would be a wonderful investment in ocean science and research for Oregon. Um, so that wording is general enough to include, you know, sequestration of blue carbon. So I think that as long as we quote that in your letter would be good. Okay. Yeah, I would recommend putting in language pretty close to that in the letter. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Christine's point about tidal forested wetlands um, um, being a, a ha having great potential for carbon sequestration, and I do, and I also agree with her that they um, could uh, that they could be captured. They're, this is general enough to be captured under the nearshore marine ecosystems subclause. All right. Well, um, I think just in the interest of making motions today, dotting our I's, pressing our T's, I'd love to um, just have a motion to um, have me send the letter um, of support on behalf of the Oost. So moved. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that motion passes. Thank you for writing that letter. It's a good letter. It's exciting. I had some help. <laughs> I was, that's why it was, it was somebody helped draft it for me. And so I kind of needed to go in there. I was a little reluctant to share it because I hadn't had a chance to um, make the amendments, but I will do so as I know that time is of the essence on this. And um, hopefully we'll have some good, we'll hear some good news. Um, I don't have any other agenda items, and this was an emergency meeting. I don't believe that we scheduled a public comment period. Um, does anyone else have any other business or any other items for today's meeting? Then as promised, I will have you done two minutes behind what I had said of 3.30. So, I thank you all very much, and I look forward to seeing these little boxes again on April 6th. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Chairwoman.
Anderson, right. and it's nice to see everyone. Senator. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you for identifying this issue and, and bringing us together to remedy it so quickly. Um, yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah, what a great group that you can get a board together in a few days notice. It's incredible, really. So great, we can move forward. Yes, <laughs> all right. <We're> <laughs> all right, thank you all. Great. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.